part three, and here's a diagram of uh, using this idea of effort arm and resistance arm. And of course we can see that on the left is the effort arm. That's where we're coming down with some effort uh, five meters from the uh, fulcrum. Here's F, the fulcrum. And then the resistance arm is on the, on the right and uh, it's 50 newton uh, resistance and it's 2 meters from the fulcrum. So let's just say that we know and realize that the effort times the distance which is over here on the left is equal to the resistance 50 newtons times the distance 2 meters and therefore we we work this out and we know that our effort has to be uh, 50 times 2 100 newton meters and our distance is 5 so we know that our effort must be 20 newtons and 20 newtons is that effort required five meters away to throw that um, resistance. So what is the mechanical advantage? We, we say, what is the mechanical advantage of this machine? And the answer would be, we need to look at the resistance moved, resistance moved, And that would be 50 divided by the effort. So we moved this item that's 50 newtons, and the effort that we put to it was 20 newtons. So the mechanical advantage is 50 over 20. So as we work that out, that's two and a half mechanical advantage. So this machine is giving me a two and a half mechanical advantage. Okay, that's good. That means my effort is being multiplied two and a half times in the work that is being accomplished. Okay. Yeah. So think of a. Of course, that's our first degree. Uh, I was just thinking a second degree uh, machine would have the uh, resistance in the middle with the uh, fulcrum on one end. Now we've always used the wheelbarrow, but what would it be like to use a door? Would a door be viewed as a machine? Well, let's take a look. We've got a hinge on this one side, the hinge, top of the door, bottom of the door, and of course it pivots on that hinge, so that would be the um, the fulcrum. Then we got a doorknob, here's where your effort is. And remember, the resistance, the door, the heavy door, is in the middle, so you swing the door open on the hinge, and swing it back. And so this swinging door would be an example of that second degree lever. Okay, and now uh, if I was to ask you now, think of an arm. What is an arm? If you have, a, let's say you have your hand out, and this is your hand, and you have a softball in there. This would be the resistance, right? You're going to lift the softball. Here's your elbow, okay? And on your elbow, of course, here's where your uh, fulcrum would be. The fulcrum would be, and, uh, and then your effort is where the muscle pulls, right? Here's your bicep, and it's pulling on these two muscles, or these two bones in your uh, forearm. Uh, the tibia and the, uh, not the tibia, the, um, 
Oh boy, I'm forgetting those two names now. Anyway, you have those two arms, uh, the ulna and the radius, correct. So the muscle is attached to the ulna and the radius, these two bones, and the muscle pulls. That would be the effort. So the effort is pulling the arm up and it launching. Uh, so, so if you can pull a couple inches up here, the softball is going to pull up much further. You're going to get more movement. Okay, So let's say the softball moves 10 inches, but your muscle only contracts one inch. It only pulls one inch. So how do you do the mechanical advantage of your arm? Well, it's the resistance. Mechanical advantage is the resistance moved divided by the effort moved, right? Divided by the effort. So we have uh, 10 inches is the resistance. It's been moved 10 inches, and that's divided by the effort. The effort was just 1 inch. So look at that. We've All of a sudden, we've got a mechanical advantage of what? 10 over 1, or 10, right? That is a very efficient uh, machine, your arm, uh, if you want to re refer to it as a machine. Let's kind of show this in a different way. There's the fulcrum. The effort is in the middle. And over here is the resistance. Okay, there's more of a schematic, okay? Now today, what we're going to look at, uh, kind of a new area, is pulleys. Pulleys are a lot of fun, and pulleys are also a machine. Uh, pulleys increase the force that you, uh, they, they magnify the force that you, uh, you use on the pulley so that you can do more work. Sort of the classic thing is, you know, you hook up a pulley uh, and you connect that pulley to a piano. And then uh, one man can lift this huge piano with a pulley. So just with his own weight, his own strength, he pulls on the rope and it's hooked through these pulleys and the, and the piano is pulled up. And you all have seen that illustration in your book. So if you didn't see it in your book, you ought to go to your book and read your assignment so that you can uh, be in, incredibly on top of this, okay? So, yeah, we're going to review that a little bit right now. So pulley is a modified lever. Now another modified lever is a bicycle. And of course when you have your feet uh, clicking through the gears, on your bike, you different uh, gears, you move your feet more slowly, and the and and uh, the the back uh, tire uh, moves rather quickly. You know, for the amount of movement that you're doing your feet, and then when you go uphill, a steep hill, you click down into a lower gear, and your feet are going much faster but your back tire is moving slower. So, you know, there's these gear ratios. So really what you have there is your fulcrum is a um, cylinder that goes through your tire called the axle. And uh, I'll put the axle over here. And of course the tire is um, the distance uh, of the is on the ground and it it counts as, as so the uh, really what you have is you have a lever that's wrapped around the axle of your tire and that's why a, a bicycle will work so a bicycle is a modified lever but another one is the pulley and these are modified levers a pulley is a Beautiful example of a modified lever. Now let's let's take a look at this because um, 
in a pulley, the effort arm and the resistance arm are the same length. So we're not talking about D so much, the distance. And we'll just kind of show this to you. Um, here is called a single fixed pulley. So from the ceiling, there's a pulley that uh, is, is fixed. It doesn't move. So let me put down a single fixed pulley. So we put a rope around that pulley and we attach it to, let's say, a 10 Newton weight. And then we pull this pulley. Now you can see very easily, you know, this guy, let's say it's you, you've got your arms on this thing and you give it a big strong pull. Okay, there's your hair and a little bit of a wild hair day but you pull it, okay? And uh, if you pull it one meter, how much does it go up? Well, you can see if you're just going through one pulley, you pull one meter down, it's going to go up one meter, right? So it's going to, with one meter pull, it's going to go up one meter, okay? So what you do is to figure out your mechanical advantage you say to yourself, okay, what is the resistance divided by the effort? Okay, and in this case, your resistance is 10 newtons. And of course, you're moving the resistance up one meter because you're pulling down one meter. How much would you have to pull? What's the force you'd have to pull? Yeah, 10 newtons, okay? So 10 divided by 10 is going to be equal to 1. So you have a mechanical advantage of 1 here. Now about the only uh, advantage that you have, you're not getting any real leverage advantage here. You're pulling at 10 newtons and you're lifting a 10 newton weight. But it may be easier to get it off the ground by pulling down, kind of putting your weight on it, then going over to it and leaning over and, and bending your back and picking up 10, neuter, uh, 10 newtons. So it may be better than picking it off the floor. The advantage is your ability to put your weight into it. So I'm going to put that down here. Your, your ability to put your weight into it. That's the advantage of this single fixed pulley. So you need to recognize that. It's not giving you a big mechanical advantage. It's more like a positional advantage. Now let's look at a couple other opportunities of studying uh, pulleys. Let's, and, and this will kind of, I think, pick up for us. Let's look at a single movable pulley now. So this is going to be just a one rope. Again, it's going to be a single movable pulley. So you have like the ceiling or, some, or a beam and then the rope is attached there and it comes down and it's being pulled, but it's got a pulley right here with a weight that it's lifting, okay? Now, you can kind of see the effort that you do here as you pull it. If you pull one meter, right, how much will this go up? Now, I'm going to give you a hint. It's not going to go up one meter. Why? Because the weight is split out on two ropes. You know what? If you pull one meter here, it is only going to go up 0.5 meters. Right, it's only going to go up one because the meter pole is being spread over two ropes. And likewise, when you pull it, you know, the weight, let's say the weight down here, 
is 10 newtons. It's only feeling like 5 newtons because the weight is split out onto two ropes. So you have to look at your ropes and you have to figure how would that weight uh, be spread and how would the effort be spread, okay? So um, now you're still going to have to pull with an effort of 10 newtons here to move this, but it, but the, the thing is, it's, it's only going to move half as much. So it's going to feel like half the effort. Okay. So let's take make a note on this. The weight is divided over two ropes or two strings. Okay. And so we have 10 newtons of effort. My effort is going to be 10 newtons, okay? And so, uh, really the, the, the big uh, difference here that, the, that we see here, that, that this is going to perhaps help me with, is the distance of the effort divided by the distance of the resistance and the distance of the effort is one meter the distance the resistance moves is half a meter so one divided by half is two so that's my mechanical advantage okay so this does have a mechanical advantage to me okay gives me a mechanical advantage of 2. Now let's look at a, another type of, um, of uh, pulley, and this is known as a block and tackle. Block and tackle. So with this pulley, it's attached to the ceiling. Has a small pulley and a larger pulley, and attached to this is you've got a smaller pulley joined to a larger pulley, and that pulley is attached to a weight. Let's just give this. A weight. This is a heavy weight. This is 60 newtons. Okay. Now, how are all these attached? Okay. So I'm going to now uh, kind of give you guys a uh, a line now. See so if you can follow this. Here's the line. And it's in red. Well, we're we're going first class here. We got red, and it's going to go around and go up around this pulley, and then it's going to go down. And around this pulley, and around this pulley, and it's going to be pulled this way. So you see what's happening? We've got this line that is uh, this rope. It's going around four pulleys. There are four of them. Okay. Now because of the pulleys, you would say that this has got a mechanical advantage of four. That's going to be the resistance uh, over the effort. It's going to give you a mechanical advantage of four. Okay. So when you think about that, as you pull one meter here, this is not going to raise the weight, the resistance, four meters. No way. Or one meter. In fact, what it's going to do is it's, this, it, it's going to raise it, but its raise will be one meter divided out between four ropes. One, 
two, three, four. So there's four ropes. So my resistance, um, uh, the distance is going to be the distance of the uh, effort, one meter. That's my effort div divided by the resistance or the distance of the uh, resistance. Okay, so my effect, uh, you know, my effort is one meter, but it's point two five or one fourth of a meter. So as I pull one meter, the weight is only going to go up point two five meters. It's only going to go up one fourth of a meter. So one divided by one fourth is four. So the mechanical advantage of this is going to be four. So you have to be careful. Each rope supports one fourth of the resistance, but the rope that I pull, as I pull this down, I've got to pull it four times the distance that the resistance is moved. So the resistance only moves a fourth of a meter, but I'm pulling it four times the, the amount. Okay. Now, here's another thing. The weight of this resistance is also divided out. So for me, as I pull that one meter pull, I'm only, it only feels like one-fourth the weight, like 15 newtons, newtons excuse me. Um, so 60 divided by 4 is 15, so 15 newtons is what it feels like. Now, I want to, you to go to box, um, and there's a box on page um, 2, uh, excuse me, 325. We're going to take a look at that box. Let's, let's turn there now, and we're going to kind of explain it. Page 325. So here's our section on these um, pulleys. And notice what it says, working with pulleys. Suppose a workman is trying to lift a piano with a six pulley block and tackle. Three fixed and three movable pulleys. See figure 14.7. So that's down there on the bottom of the page. If the piano weighs 200 or 2,400 newtons, how much effort will be required of the workman? What is the mechanical advantage of the system? Okay, so here's what we know. Since six ropes are attached to the resistance, the mechanical advantage is six. So the weight of the piano, which is two, uh, 2,400 newtons, um, it's going to feel like it's one-sixth because you have a mechanical advantage of six. So it's going to feel like you're, you're uh, raising it up as you pull it. It's going to feel like you're pulling 400 newtons. Or about 90 pounds. Okay. Now, the unknown is the effort required to lift the piano. So, how do you work this out? Solution. Since the mechanical advantage is six, and you know that two ways. You know that by the number of ropes, okay, but you also know it by the number of pulleys. So you've got six. The effort required will be one-sixth of the resistance. So one-sixth times the 2,400 newtons is equal to 400 newtons effort. So one-sixth of the resistance uh, weight of 2,400 newtons divided by six is 400 newtons. One, that, that amount will move the piano. And that's what you're finding. That's the effort that you need to move it because you have this mechanical advantage. 
uh, that, that's to working to your advantage, okay? Now, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to work a little further on this in our next tape as we look at inclined planes.